thank you for coming and introduce our artist all the way from New Jersey. Lauren is going to talk about her work. Hi, everybody. <laughs> all right, so I thought I would start with some of the earliest things, just to tell you a little bit about, you know, like what I focus on. You know when you're in school and people tell you, you know, okay, make a print or make a painting, and you're like, well, what, of what, you know, like, what are you going to do? And so that's always a challenge, I think, to think about, you know, what your subject matter is going to be. And I had a teacher who would always, you know, I would, you know, do a bowl of fruit. He's like, well, why are you doing that bowl of fruit? You know, like, really kind of ask you, you know, press you, like, why are you doing that? And so it made you think, you know, well, I don't know why. So it made you, you know, get invested in what you're doing. So um, I always thought about that saying, what they tell people um, who are writers, write what you know, you know, like write, write about what's familiar to you. So, you know, I really focus on the people, places, and things around me, but trying to take an interesting twist on it. So this is a print that I did. It's an etching. Um, and, um, when I, um, I was out in Utah teaching. And the name of it is Utah Landscape. So I put all the things that reminded me of, you know, the, the locale. So there's a trampoline, because I remember um, everybody seemed to have a trampoline in their backyard. It's like a cultural thing, right? And it really, you know, when you're from another area, you really notice these things. And um, they, there are mountains, and um, you guys are probably too young to remember the comet hail bop. Do you remember that? Um, it was this big comet, and it was when I was out there, so I put the comet in it. And um, I live near a Mormon temple, and they wear special clothes. I mean, like, they bring their church clothes in a suitcase to temple, and then they change when they get there in a special room. Um, they don't want to wear street clothes into their holy place, so, and they walk. So every Sunday morning, I'd see all these people walking down the street with their suitcases. <laughs> and, you know, they were, so I put a suitcase in there, too, with some of their temple garments and a jello mold. Um, and there's a little print over there. It's a uh, lime jello is the title of it. And uh, they say that people in Salt Lake City eat more green lime jello than anywhere in the country and that they consider it a vegetable. <laughs> So that was my Christmas card one year. I sent that to everybody. Um, and I also like the idea of, you know, um, portraits of people, but not necessarily with their likeness in it. Um, so just think, like, just the, the things that remind me of a place or the things that remind me of a person without, a, like, a literal portrait or landscape. So these are some photo etchings where you expose um, negatives onto photosensitive metal plates and then um, wipe them up in ink just like you would with any print, you know, any print. And um, the one on the left is called Deep Hole Creek and it's about my uncle. It's got a plate of clam spaghetti because that's what he always ate. That was his signature dish. You know how families have signature dishes, right? And um, then it's a, a, from an old picture of my grandfather and my mother and uncle clamming in the local creek and uh, parakeets on top because he had parakeets for pets. So it's kind of like a portrait of the things that remind me of him. Um, and let's see, when I, came, when I started teaching at Seton Hall, um, I was into this um, thinking about food and morality, like good food and bad food. And do you ever look at somebody's you know, shopping cart? You know, oh, mm, that's bad. <laughs> So like judging people's food and um, you know your own you know like well I'll be good today I'll only eat certain things so when I was working at Seton Hall I really liked the idea of confessionals like going in and confessing and so I combined the idea of like bad food and confessionals and but I, I just I thought um, snack cakes are kind of playful and fun to draw and so um, this one's called Confession Night Eating. I had a bad habit of waking up at night and eating like junk <laughs> in the middle of the night. So it was like that was my confession of my bad habit. And then this was confession trio and confession moon pie because uh, we have a lot of relatives in the um, in uh, North Carolina. So I thought snack cakes are different, like Philadelphia tasty cake, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, um, in the south, it's Little Debbie and Moon Pies. Now they have all that stuff everywhere, but years ago, you had your specialty snack cakes. Um, so, maybe we'll go to some paintings over on the other side. Also, um, with the idea of morality, I was thinking about um, the seven deadly sins. And so this, um, the title of this painting is Sloth. And I thought, well, what, what, what would be uh, an example of an image that would remind you of sloth? So I've got takeout food, right? So I'm not cooking. I'm too slothful to eat the Chinese food with chopsticks, so I've got a fork. <laughs> and uh, the, the stuff in the back was supposed to be like watching Survivor. Those are all their torches, <laughs> like watching TV. <laughs> and <laughs> watching TV, eating takeout food. Um, so that was my stand-in for sloth. You know? um, and then I think, you know, about just strange food, um, you know, cheese whiz, um, a Ritz cracker, and thinking, well, you know, something natural like cows produce milk and it ends up in this product. Um, so that title of that one is Processed. And uh, so I do these um, mostly drawings first. So I'll take a, a wooden panel, I'll put gesso on it, sand it really, really smooth. And then either take a pencil, like a regular um, lead pencil, or a grease pencil. I shouldn't say grease, an oil pencil, like something like a Prismacolor, but with a little bit more oil in it. And I'll do the drawing, you know, in black and white on the panel. And then I take um, oil paint mixed with liquid um, in a very, very thin glaze, and just it's almost like um, a wash, almost like a transparent watercolor wash, only it's in oil so that it, it kind of colors the drawing, but you can still see the drawing underneath. And uh, that's mostly um, the technique for the etchings. This is all um, on copper plates. So uh, what kind of different making do you do here? We don't do um, etching, we do dry point. Dry point. So it's similar to dry point in that you're, you know, you're digging into a plate, although and the only difference is instead of digging into the plate, you kind of you put a ground on it and expose a line, and then acid eats into the plate. So instead of your, you know, your strength, it's acid eating, and it gets a little bit deeper and darker. Yeah. Um, so remember that? Remember that? <laughs> 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 um, so okay, some of these um, here. Uh, the one on the end is uh, called Equinox. Um, I, I, you know, again, I'm very into the food imagery. Um, I like to um, do work about food because it just has a lot of connotations, moral connotations, cultural connotations, familial, you know, like things your family does. Um, have you ever heard of that website, chowhound.com? Um, well, it's, a, it, it's all about food and people, right? you know, some of the threads are things you eat in the privacy of your own home, but would never eat in public, and then people write all these crazy, yeah, I eat peanut butter on bacon. <laughs> you know, just all these crazy <laughs> things. So, um, uh, you know, on some website I found that there were these different rituals, and one of them, uh, I have in another painting, but not here, um, it's uh, at, at the winter solstice, you know, you put out lights on your Christmas tree to bring cheer, and they, one ritual was to eat all yellow foods, like hmm, grapefruit, yellow cake, anything yellow, it's supposed to be bright, brighten your mood. And in this case, for the spring equinox, some of the food rituals were to eat hot cross buns, um, eat red eggs that stand on the end, on their ends that balance only at the equinox. I mean, this is not necessarily real, but these are like maybe pagan rituals or something. And um, floating a leaf on a bowl. So just little rituals for different times of year. And I, I kind of like the idea of rituals. And um, when you think about Christmas, what your parents always make, what your grandparents always make. You have family rituals or um, you know, your nationality. And, you know, just, I think that's just a nice identification. Um, 
the three confessional paintings here. Um, have you ever heard of the artist Joseph Cornell? Yeah, he does mm -hmm. these little boxes, collage boxes. Um, he did. And I, he's one of my favorite artists. I just think his, his work looks so, I don't know, magical and mystical. And, um, and he, I read an autobiography, uh, no, a biography of him called Utopia Parkway. And she, it was a beautiful book. It really described his life. He was kind of a hermit. He worked in the basement of his mother's house. And, um, and it, throughout the book, it said the only pleasures he allowed himself were cake, cookies, and pineapple soda. Like, it just went on. It Like, he lived this Spartan life, except he loved sweets. You know, his favorite, you know, uh, like a good day for him is if he had an ice box full of cake, cookies, and you know, whatever. So I did this little series, like an homage to Joseph Cornell, um, and you know, with some of the things they described, a box of donuts, um, banana cream pie, um, and then I used little star charts as um, wallpaper because he had a lot of star charts in the little boxes, so the confessionals to me were kind of like the little boxes, you know, the box of the room, the box of the confessional, kind of repeating some of his imagery with the star charts, and then some of the foods that he liked. And so I like to read books and, you know, kind of take off on some of that for subject matter too. Um, there's this great book that I read called, by Carolyn Walker Bynum, I think she teaches at Columbia, and it was called Holy Fast, Holy Feast, The Significance of Food to Medieval Women Mystics. And uh, so these are, they are great stories. So like Catherine of Hungary and Ludwig of, you know, so and so these uh, medieval women. And they wanted to have a holy life, but, you know, that was a realm of men. So they, you know, they, um, would do things like they only wanted to live on the host because they felt that that would bring them connection. And they would be denied the host by the priest, but then there'd be a miracle where um, the host would fly down to them on the wings of a dove. And so there are all these ways that, we, you know, I mean, they're, you know, stories, but I just love them because it, you know, women's connection with their spirituality and that they found a, you know that there was a way and so this one a couple of these this one where the host is flying into her mouth um, that one's called fast food because they were fast you know they they did it through fasting so let's see and there's one other you know with a with holding up the host and so I did it I mean if you I have on my website a few more of um, images that um, refer to those stories because I really love them. Because in one of the stories it said the priest denied the women for ho the host because they were hysterical and they would get nosebleeds and and then the, the host flew down to them. So you know they got what they needed. So I, it's a little subversive, but in a kind of gently feminist way. <laughs> so. Um, and then the crow prints, um, crows are scavengers, and um, I was thinking, you know, they talk about as the crow flies, 